Hi, Michael Hurwich here for creativecow.net. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at inverse kinematics in Flash. I'm going to be working in Flash CS5, but the information in this tutorial applies equally to Flash CS4. We are going to be using a little bit of action script, and the action script is based on this help file. So you might want to take a look at this help file and you'll notice a lot of similarities between my code and the code in this help file. I'm going to start by opening a new project. File New, or you could use Control N. Make it an ActionScript 3 project. And I'll start by saving it. You can see I've done a number of Bones projects here. And this one will be Bones 08. And my first step is just to draw a figure that I'm going to be animating. So I'll start by going to the Brush tool. I need to move this over so you can see what I'm doing here. Just choosing a fairly dark color of green. This is going to be my outline of my figure. And I'm going to start by drawing what is going to be the head. And I'll draw an eye in the middle of my head. I'm going to draw my parts separately to begin with, and then I'll move them together. So this is my neck. And by the way, going to properties here, you'll notice I got my brush set on 100% smoothing. So that helps smooth my lines out. I'm going to just going to make sure that this is a closed shape. That's my neck. There's my body. got a tail and four legs. Then I'm going to lighten up. Once again I'll move this over. Choose a much lighter shade of green. Choose the paint bucket tool and fill these in. So that's not truly a closed shape. Go back to the brush. Go back to that darker color. Make sure that's closed. I'm going to put a little smile on him too. Go back to the paint bucket. Choose the lighter color. And there we go. And I'll just uh, choose the brush here again, make this white, and get a little white in the eye, and maybe a little bit of black. There we go. So there's my figure. Choose the selection tool, and choose the stroke. Hold down the shift key and choose the fill and move the tail onto the body. Stroke, shift, fill, move. Stroke, shift, fill, move. Click the stroke, hold down the shift key, click the fill, move. Stroke, shift, fill, move, stroke, shift, fill, move, and this one I'll just drag a selection box around and move that. So there's my figure. Now I'm going to select the whole figure. I've already got the selection tool. Just drag a selection box around the whole figure. Now notice we have the figure in layer one, but now I'm going to create an armature, a system of bones and joints. So to do that, I choose my bone tool, click right in the middle of the body, click and drag, go to about the middle of those two feet and release. Make sure you get the bone tool right over that joint there again. You'll see a little plus sign there when you do. 
click and drag and release at that tail joint. Again, make sure you're right over that joint when you start again so that it'll pick up from that joint. Click, drag, and release. Get right over that joint. Click, drag, and release, and make sure you're staying inside the lines. Release. Now I'm going to create my leg bones. So I'm going to start here again. Again, make sure I'm right over that joint. A little plus sign appears. Click, drag, release. Click, drag, release. Start again up here, click, drag, release, and click, drag, release. And you notice I'm always releasing where I want the joint to be. Start here again, click, drag, release, go right between those two legs. Click, drag, release up to the neck joint. Click, drag, release all the way up to the head. And click, drag, release once more for the head. Now I still need to get these legs, so start back here, click, drag, release. Click, drag, release, go back here, click, drag, release, click, drag, release. So there I have my armature. And you'll notice that there's nothing in layer one anymore. It's moved up here and it's automatically named it armature underscore two. Getting my selection tool here. Come back down here, click right in the frame you can see the name of it, armature underscore two. It assigned that automatically. And notice that we're in author time. That means we can manipulate it on the stage, but not with ActionScript. To use ActionScript with it, we'll have to go to runtime. We'll see that in just a moment. But for right now, let's just play with it on the stage a little bit. I'm just going to open that up again. So for example, I can grab this joint here and move it. And you notice it moves all the other joints and it even deforms the body as necessary. So control Z. Let's try it with this one. So it moves everything and it deforms the body a little bit as necessary. So that's our armature and we could animate this with a motion tween. I could create a keyframe out here. Why don't we just do this in fact. Go out to a frame out here. I'm going to hit F6 to create a keyframe there. I'll move this. And you see we have that animation already built in there. So that's one way to animate. And we do that in that author time mode. I'm going to control Z to undo all that. So now we're back to where we were before, no animation. Now I'm going to use some action script. So I'm going to go here, actions, I could just press F9. Choose this layer, double click and rename that actions. Click in this frame and now I can start to put actions in here. So I'm just going to cut and paste some actions in. This brings in the classes that we're going to need to access to perform inverse kinematics functions. This is the IK, inverse kinematics. This line creates a variable called tree. And that variable refers to our armature underscore two. And just to prove to myself that that worked, I'm going to trace out the name of that tree, which should be armature two. First, I'll save, and then control enter. Notice I got this error here. That's because I forgot to go into runtime mode. So let's do that. Go to the properties. Go here to the first frame of the armature. Go here and select runtime. Now let's hit control enter again. And this time it gave us the name of the armature. So that code worked. Hit F9, go back to our actions layer. Now this time I'm creating a variable called bone, which refers to an IK bone. 
and that IK bone is 13. So let's take a look at our bones here, going back to the armature level. Here, for example, we have IK bone name 3, IK bone name 4, IK bone name 5. So let's just choose IK bone name 4. I'll change the code to refer to IK bone name 4. And by the way, each bone has a head joint and a tail joint. So the part that gets created first, the fatter part of the bone, is the head joint. And then the other side, the slimmer side of the bone, which you create second when you release, that's the tail joint. And again, it automatically assigned those names. So control enter. And there we see we got that name. So we know that this line of code was successful. Now I'm going to add three lines of code. This creates a variable called end effector, which refers to the head joint of this bone variable. And this is an IK joint object. And then I'm going to create a point which refers to the position of that joint. Where is that joint? That's stored in POS. And then I'll trace out POS to make sure that that worked. First I'll control S to save and then control enter to test. And there we have it. So we did get a point. So that's good. Now I'm creating an IK mover object and putting it in the IK variable. And this mover object is going to be moving this joint and effector. And these two lines create a point. That's this line. And then move this end effector joint to that point. So let's save and control enter. So you can see that wasn't a very great move to have made, but it did work. So that was way too far over to the left from what we would actually want to do. So this point refers to x, y. x is the horizontal axis. It gets bigger as it goes to the right, so we clearly don't want it moving that far over to the left. So let's try moving it much farther to the right. Let's add 300 to that and see if that helps. So that's a little bit better. That's actually kind of cute. So that concludes this tutorial on using inverse kinematics in Flash. I hope you've enjoyed it, and thanks for tuning in.